All right, guys, it's another beautiful fall day here, and we are going to be doing some fishing. I'm going to be fishing for carp, and I'm going to be fishing for catfish here. But first, I'm going to get some live bait for flathead. So I've got a little Doc Demon Deluxe here with a number 10 hook. Got some live worms in my can here. We're going to see if we can't catch some bluegills. We're going to take them on a little ride. This little hook, a little bobber, nothing else. There we go. That's all it takes. All right, putting my bluegill in the flow troll. Just gonna drop it down there, let it fill it with water. I'm fishing out of my skiff today, so I don't have a live well. That's why I brought the flow troll along. Oh, tiny little guy. All right. Nice fat one. There you go. There you go. Another nice one. Nine bluegill on one piece of worm in under 10 minutes. That's not bad. Fall's a good time to go fishing. Every fish in this river knows that the winter's coming and they're just putting on the pounds. Well, those of you who follow my channel will know I had a little bit of an accident not too long ago in this boat. I was uh, coming back at night and hit a stump at a high rate of speed and put a big old crack in the hole of this boat. So I set it off to get repaired and uh, the guys looked like they did a bang up job repairing the fiberglass and so we're back on the water. We've been gone filming up in Alaska for six weeks and uh, prior to leaving, I had an automatic deer feeder I hooked up to a fishing spot over the water and I've been chumming and uh, I'm just going to go and top that thing off and fill it full of feed corn and hopefully that'll make this a much better spot here in the next uh, week or so. All right. Got this thing set up. It's going to spit chum out four times a night out in that spot. and. Uh, that should bring the fish in. Well, I threw out the rest of the chum and managed to get half of it in the boat. Let's go fishing. That's the log I hit and cracked my boat with. I hit it at this angle too. I was really lucky that the boat is so flexible and light because when I hit it, the boat went up in the air instead of it just impaling the boat on the log. Almost threw me and all my rods and gear out of the boat, though. Hook through the back, just like that. The old 10 knot circle hook. Got the Garmin Live Scan here, and we're actually gonna get a watch my bait go down. See this little thing wiggling around down there? That's my bluegill. Big old catfish comes and grabs that. I'm gonna actually see it on my live scope. You know, it's the middle of the day, and so the fish aren't running around as aggressively as they would be in the evening. So we're gonna try this spot, see if anything hits, and if it doesn't, we're gonna pick up and move and try another spot. You know, you gotta kind of stick and move until you find out where they're at. Oh, hello. Ooh, we got something going on here. Look at that. Taking more line than I am. Nice channel catfish. Man, I gotta put up a fight. Oh, nice fish. Got a little piece of uh, cut frozen shad there. I'm gonna drop that over the side, see what happens. Ooh, that popped off. I actually see where I hooked up the fish. A bunch of bubbles just popped up right over there where he was flopping around and stirred up the bottom. Oh, oh, oh. That's a chunky channel catfish. Woo! This one's a little bigger than eight pounds. Woo! 
Well, it's been slow and steady here, uh, but I think we're going to move and try something different. I, I'd really like to see if we can't get into some bigger fish. All right, we're going to pull up and uh, we're going to try drifting a little bit. Yeah, see that? That's my lead and my bait. I just saw a catfish come up on the screen swim around and now my rod's doing some funny business there oh. oh my goodness this this is a special fish oh my goodness oh it's towing the boat around oh my goodness Oh. oh, he is taking out rods. Oh. Oh, I just saw him. Look at the head on him. Oh. oh, I can't believe I got him in that net. Oh, he's not as big as I expected. All right, so I got him in the net. Just stick the net handle through the rod holder, and that way. I can kind of keep him in the water and mess with him a little bit. Oh, right in the corner of the mouth. Thank goodness. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. He feels like upper 30s. I'd guess 38. What a beast. Oh, that was fun. All right, let's get him back. Oh. Ooh, that guy drugged me all over the place. Do you see what a bend he put in that rod? Ooh, that was the heavy rod too. Man, that was a strong, strong flathead. Well, listen, let's see if we can't do another one of those. Oh, look at this. Right there. There's big boy right there. Big flathead. Well, let's drop another bait. That's my bait right there. You see that? It's my lead and my bait. There's a couple more catfish right there. See them? The one that's kind of fuzzy is that's one that's off to the side a little bit. Oh, well, maybe not so big, but spunky. All the fish feel bigger in this boat. <laughs> Ate that entire bluegill. Well, we're all out of live bluegill, so I'm gonna take half a frozen shad and Drop it down there and see what happens. I'm really glad to have my boat repaired and back up and running. You know, this is a cheap boat, but uh, man, it's really hard to replace. They don't make them like this anymore. Not too many boats out there that can get 21 miles per hour on a 9.9 .9 outboard. You know, drift fishing is a powerful technique and it's a great way to find new spots and kind of cover a lot of ground and prospect for catfish. But you tend not to be able to pull in large numbers like you can if you're anchored up. If I'm anchored up, I can run six, eight rods, dump them all in the same spot, and just be pulling fish hand over fist. Not so much with drifting. But what drifting allows you to do is search for spots. And when you hook a fish, immediately hit that mark button, go back and drift it a few times. And if you keep hitting fish on that spot, mark it, anchor up on that spot, and then start fishing all your rods on that spot. Oh, look at that big poop. <laughs> See this, the catfish poop? If you look at it, there's a lot of seaweed. These channel catfish like to eat seaweed. This has got some red in his poo there, so he's been eating crawfish too, so. I get all the catfish poop off my fingers. Well, we picked up four catfish on one drift, including that big old flathead, so this has been pretty successful. But we're getting close to out of bait, and uh, I want to try a little carp fishing. So I'm going to pick up my rods. We're going to go a little someplace different, see if we can't pick up some carp. All right, this is a new spot. I've never fished for carp here before, but I want to give this a try. And I'm targeting this little bit of weeds right here. Man, that's perfect in the spring and the fall. A great spot to target fish. All right, I've got a, a ball of Ponco 
strawberry jello and sweet corn. I'm gonna pack that around the lead. So this is a big bucket of my carb bait. It's just dehydrated breadcrumb or panko that I mix with sweet corn and uh, strawberry jello mix and add a little bit of water and it makes a dough. I buy the panko either in the grocery stores or I have like 50 pound bags of it in my garage I got from like a restaurant supply store. But you can use oats, instant oatmeal, grits, ground up soybean. I mean, there's lots of things you can use. You can even take old bread and put it in a blender to make this. Yeah. Somebody gave me this butternut syrup here and I have no clue whether it's any good for carb, but it is the most delicious smelling thing I've ever smelled in my life. It just, <laughs> oh, it's great. Little goes a long way. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. Watch, I'm gonna try to bomb it right there by that little point. That's perfect. Because I'm throwing this chum stuck to my, my lead, it's really important that I not drag my rigs. If your boat moves around on the anchor and it drags your leads, then your chum's like five, six feet away from your hook. And instead of attracting fish to your hook, it's attracting fish away from your hook. So it's really important to fish with slack lines so that as the boat shifts around a little bit on the anchor, it doesn't drag your rig away. All right, got three carp rods on this side. I got three catfish rods on this side. And all three of the carp rods are fishing up close to those weeds over there. Check it out, just got a bite on this first rod and I can look over there and see bubbles popping up right around where I cast my bait. Means the carp's grubbing around down there, picking up all the bait. Little baby channel catfish. I had a little bit of action on the carp rod, but it really hasn't turned into anything. And I, man, I really want to catch a carp. So I think I'm going to reel up and try one more spot. I can see a carp rolling in the weeds right over there. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. It's not a trophy, but that's a respectable channel cat. Well, I've been here about five minutes and I've already seen two carp jump clean out of the water. So they're, they're here. It's just a question of whether they will find my hook before I have to give up and go home. Well, it's down to the wire. The sun's setting here and we're gonna see if we can pick up a last minute fish. This rod right here is getting a bite. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, he is pulling the boat around. Oh. Yeah, he liked my corn. Uh, channel catfish do that. Well, this has been a load of fun, but it's getting seriously dark. I think I better go home and get some dinner. Well, you guys, hope you enjoyed this video because I had a great time catching this fish in that little skiff. If you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching.